Oh yeah, John Long, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Blue Roots Denver Television, Denver's own blues, jazz, funk, and soul television program. And uh, John, you've probably been playing music since before I was born, and uh, I'm lucky to catch the tail end of it. Well, my mom, she always kept uh, stringed instruments around the house, because my mom, she played uh, mostly classical violin, and she played a little mandolin, she played a mandola. You know what? We, and, uh, Hold on one sec. Chuck, can we give him this mic? Uh, Share your mic. Here. Talk to him. Sorry, Johnny. I'm going to keep it right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. <laughs> now I'm going to say it again. Thank you. You're welcome. And this is one of the best TV programs have been on a few of them. Let's give a round of applause. James Spicer and everybody, all the technicians. Anyway, I ain't saying it because I'm here, because I know it's the truth. The proof's in the pudding. <laughs> well, you the pudding. Well, and you use the pudding. Look, <laughs> this guy is putting this thing together. It's gonna, going to be, and it is right now, a happening thing. It's going to be even more happening as time goes on. Because uh, th this city and, and uh, whole, all around the United States is ready because I think there, there's, uh, the tide is, you know, they want to hear some real things. Comes back around. Comes back around. And, uh, well, my mother, when we were growing up, she kept string instruments around. She played violin. And she played uh, uh, mandolin, mandola. Kept a lot of things. Anyway, we were sort of just fooling around. And my brother, and he's totally blind, but he at that time he could still have some sight. But even not having sight, he can still feel his way around on the fretboard better than I can. Wow. But what was my, his name? His name is Claude Blues Boss Long. He lived in Kansas City for a while. Wow. And playing blues. Right now he's semi-retired, but you may hear some things. Uh, he kind of comes in and, well, he comes out of hiding. Wow. <laughs> but... Uh, Anyway, so I moved out of Kansas City. He lives in Missouri now, in Springfield. So we go back and forth between Missouri, uh, you know, make sure everything's okay. But he's, he's more of a mule than me. So. I see. So we're both from wow. St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, anyway, so my mother, we learned uh, playing. That she showed us some guitar chords on $10 pawn shop guitar, so high. <laughs> anyway. So it uh, hurt your fingers. Then we uh, then uh, got us a harmony guitar. Then uh, found and then some other Gibson. We had some other guitars. But anyway, just saying. Now the harmonica thing comes from my dad. My dad was uh, born in Kosciuszko, Mississippi, the same town that Charlie Musselwhite's from, hmm. and a lot of other blues bluesmen. Then anyway, uh, raised up in Batesville, right down the road from Clarksdale. Well, when we were kids, uh, it wasn't, uh, put it like this, uh, it wasn't very nice. It wasn't very, anyway, but now you can go to Batesville, it's, it's a melting pot of all uh, colors, cultures, of uh, people, and it's really, they were really nice to my wife and I. And so then we go there, and, and anyway, my dad taught us how to play my dad was an old-time baseball player, played from Mississippi and, and Georgia and stuff. Anyway, but he played uh, old-time harmonica, Red River Valley and stuff. That's where I learned tongue blocking. Learned oh, okay. Very, took a long time, man. Then I learned Jimmy Reed's uh, style harmonica from uh, Doc Terry, the great unsung hero of blues harmonica, Doc Terry. He's from Mississippi, lived in East St. Louis, and you'd come up, uh, and we'd do gigs in, in uh, East St. Louis. Do I was one of the pirates. I played bass guitar huh. and recorded on the DTP label. Oh, okay. Doc Terry and the Pirates. And I think he's one of the greatest harmonica players. And, and he taught me uh, a Jimmy Reed thing. I was just a young punk at the time. And I couldn't stay. I had a hot foot. Couldn't stay long. 
I, I didn't like St. Louis because because uh, there at the time they they had uh, it, it was just too too much uh, racism and stuff. And at least you can go to Chicago and get a break. And my brother he went to Kansas City. He did. So, but you go back and forth, you know. But uh, anyway, with the help of the good Lord, and I'll say it like this, and I'm proud to say thank you, Jesus, because and one for him, because, man, I, uh, you know, you fall down and, and you get up, and, but you don't stay down. And nobody's perfect. Only good Lord's perfect. But I just would have been dead if it wasn't for him. I'd be I gotcha. And I ain't preaching no religion. I'm just telling you. And uh, That's your life, man. So we got, you know, my wife and I, we got, you stay on the road and everything, got an old van, keep, keep old grandpa, that's what we call it, kept old grandpa going. But these, see these people out here? All these, I'm not calling everybody's name, but these are some beautiful peoples out here. Yep. And, and uh, uh, the guys, there's uh, singers and, and violin, all kind. The best people. The come best out to people. See you. These are the best people. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> but my favorite saying from the old people, and this. Uh, there's a, there's a great song by the great uh, piano player, Little Brother Montgomery. He's from Vicksburg, Mississippi. He does this thing called Talkin' Boogie. Hmm. And he's playing, he's got this brush drummer behind him. And he says, man, he's, he, somebody walks in, he says, that's a solid sender. That's the old people. And being around the old people, that's how I learned. And they yell at me, I'm glad they did. But at the time, I went to a Catholic school and the nuns yelled at me. I didn't like it at the time. <laughs> but see, God puts people in our life sometimes a little hard on. But you know, you don't appreciate it at the time, but you appreciate it that people took time. They out. cared to tell they you. They cared huh? to tell you. And, and the only thing, it's like I've, I've been through some of the things that musicians go through, uh, drugs, alcohol, but thank the Lord that you know it's just uh there's people some of the oldest people don't have to do it anymore they said no pour this whiskey pour this wine down the drain i don't want no more re reefer i don't want no more cocaine i don't want so that's that, so i was I, I seen that part of it too sure but but you you go through the hard part going through all these things and fussing and fighting and things but this is great to be, this man here been through hard thing, come up on the street playing music. And, and it's hard, man. I tried to play on the street. It ain't easy. People cuss at you. People, people rob, take stuff. They try. <laughs> they try. They'll try if you let them. You, that's right. So They'll try even if you don't let that, them. That's right. So uh, anyway. So uh, hey, we're lucky to be playing music in that, better places. You know amen. what I mean? We're lucky. Now look, this guy here, he's got this beautiful this shirt. Hey, but you, but that, they don't make them like that anymore. If you do, they're going to sell them at uh, what, Macy's or, or uh, uh, Eddie Bauer. Will do it. But this is best. We got about Matt? 30 seconds. <laughs> All right. The 30 seconds, give it to my host. I'm, I'm so glad to have John Long on the show. It means a lot to me. There's no one else you can talk to on the phone for two hours. I want to thank Lionel and everybody for showing up. And uh, thanks, everybody, tuning in to Blue Roots Denver, Denver's own blues, jazz, funk, and soul television show. And I want to thank Ed uh, in the booth back there, executive producer, you know, getting everybody on board, telling them what camera shots to take and everything. So I want to thank you guys all for being here and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.